on my channel. If you are new here, my name is Ode and I am coming to you from Edinburgh in Scotland. And today we've got a normal podcast episode, which I'm really excited about because I've got some really nice projects to talk to you about. Um, a few admin bits. Let's see if you want to find me other places. I'm on Instagram and Ravelry as Bubbles and Berries. It's the same everywhere. Um, Thank you very much for all your nice comments on my last video, which was a Q&A. It's the first one that I've ever done on this channel and it was really nice and it was lovely to read your comments and chat with you in, in the comments. Um, what else we've, I still, or we, uh, by we I mean me and uh, Venetia of the Woolly Worker with Knitting podcast, we still have a knit along running. If you are interested, I'll put all the details on this side here. It's called the Winter um, the winter set knit along and the idea is to knit uh, matching accessory set so like hats scarves gloves that kind of thing and it's running until the 20th of March so if you want to enter and still participate go ahead uh, everything is happening over on Instagram and uh, yeah so that's happening and then um, I guess I'll talk more about uh, things that are going on in the shop at the end, but I just wanted to mention here that I have started a newsletter. It's something that I mentioned earlier this year and a lot of you were quite keen on a newsletter just, just for like shop things. So not necessarily for like channel, like YouTube channel things or, or what I knit or things like that, but more for like actual shop things, which would be an easier way for me to share with you information as to what is going on with the shop, what is new in the shop and when shop updates are happening. I think, um, yeah, like I usually share that on Instagram, but you know, the algorithm just doesn't like, it doesn't show you everything that the people you follow post. So that's easy to miss, I think. And then YouTube, I'm not on YouTube, like I'm on YouTube like once or maybe twice a month and it doesn't always uh, coincide with when I have a shop update. So um, YouTube is not really the most reliable place for me to announce those things. So I think, yeah, I, the newsletter is probably the most foolproof way of getting that information. Um, I'm going to send out once a month, I think. Um, that's what seems relevant right now. I don't want to clutter your inboxes. I also don't have like enough interesting things to say in a newsletter to send more than once a month. So um, yeah, it will be probably once a month just before something new is released in the shop or there's a shop update and it will go directly into your inboxes. So if you're interested, um, I will put the link to sign up down below. I'll also put a QR code here. So if you're watching on your TV or something, you just scan it with your phone and it'll take you to the page where you can sign up. And yeah, I think that way it's, it's the easiest way to get uh, relevant information about the shop if that is something that you are interested in. If you're not interested in the shop, that is absolutely fine. And the newsletter is not for you because yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've done it. I sent up one out last week because uh, I had a shop update this past weekend, which is what I'm saying, like I'm recording after the shop update has, ha has happened. So YouTube is not always definitely the best place to get that kind of like information. Um, and yeah, I'll send out another one uh, towards the end of March. And uh, yeah, so that's it for the for the shop. I just wanted to mention this uh, uh, at the start, but I'll talk, I have a few new things, um, new designs and things, but I'll talk about that at the end. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. Let's just let's just dive right in. Uh, I've got uh, three finished object for you today, including a sewing item. It's been a while. It's been a very long while, but I have a sewing item. It's not the most exciting, but it is a finished object. And then I have two works in progress. And then I have uh, a couple acquisitions. And yeah, 
that's that. So let's start with finished objects and what I am wearing right now, which you will have seen is also the thumbnail of this episode. And this is my finished Celeste sweater. So I'm just going to like rise up a little bit so you can see, but um, uh, I'll put some pictures on the side, which are uh, better. But yeah, this is what it looks like all finished. And yeah, I am so happy with this. It is so, so nice. I, I don't remember exactly where I was the last time I was chatting with you. I think I was probably, um, I think I was knitting on the sleeves during the q and I think I had finished the yoke in my previous episode. Uh, so yeah, I was just got distracted by other things that I, need, I wanted to knit on. And so it, um, it didn't knit as quickly as I hoped I guess or I mean not that it matters like it's finished when it's finished right like it's just it's a hobby and it's not I don't want to put the pressure on myself to like knit something within a certain time frame like I want to enjoy my knitting so yeah anyway so let's go for I have my notes to the side here um all right so this is the Celeste sweater by Petite Knit a lot of people are knitting it right now in a lot of different colors which is quite amazing if you follow the hashtag on Instagram or if you just have a look at the hashtag on Instagram you will see all the color combinations and it is so nice I really love it uh, I knit it in St. Nes Garn Pierre Gint which is the um, the yarn that Petite Knit used for um, her own design when she designed it but a lot of people have also used uh, uh, Phil Colana Perugian Highland Wool, which is interchangeable, uh, which is pretty much interchangeable with uh, Pierre Gint, and it's a lot softer, so if that's what you're looking for. Personally, I love Pierre Gint. It's my first time knitting with it. I really enjoy knitting with it, and I'm really, really enjoying knitting it. It is not itchy to me, but it is rustic. I will say that. It is a rustic yarn. It is not nearly as soft as Peruvian Highland Wool, if you have tried that before but I don't find it itchy. I could see how more sensitive people or like people who are more sensitive to, to wool may find it itchy, um, but yeah, it's fine on me. Um, it is very, very warm, which I really like. I could definitely see that being used as well for like sort of like thicker cardigans that are kind of like jackets kind of um, like garments. Like I think that would be great. But yeah, I, I love it. It's so nice. It's definitely a yarn that I'm going to use again in the future. It is very inexpensive. I bought this particular yarn when I was traveling to Oslo in um, December, in December. Um, but it's one that we can find very easily in the UK. And I'm sure Sandsgaard has stockists all over the world. So, or I hope so anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's in the UK, it's very easy to find. I think when I was in Oslo, I ended up paying maybe like three, the equivalent of like three pounds, 50, three pounds, 60, something like that, a ball. And I think if you buy in the UK, it's about four pounds. So the, the difference, I guess, is not that big. So, and it's again, like quite cheap. The um, balls are 50 grams. And yeah, definitely something that I would use again. Definitely yarn that I might use to knit Kyle something because I think he would really enjoy it. He's not sensitive to wool either and it's he's always cold. So a really warm yarn um, would be great. And I think, and they have a decent uh, color selection. So um, so yeah, that's that's great. I'm not gonna go into de all the details of like what are the colors that I use because I've mentioned it before and it's also on my Ravelry project page. Um, if you don't have access to Ravelry and really want to know, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, I'm, I also don't know them off the top of my hand of my head, and the the leftovers are tucked away somewhere. So uh, yeah, but basically I have the beige is the main color, and then I have a dark blue and a light blue, and then a sort of warmer beige and that kind of like brown, like yeah, brown color. And um, yeah, what else did I want to say? I made the size small, which is in the new Petite Knit Patterns, it's the third size because she's added like an extra, extra small that wasn't there before. So I used a size small. I think I'm more or less on gauge. Uh, I haven't checked after blocking and all that. Um, I know that I usually get gauge with Petite Knit Patterns, so I don't really always swatch anymore for Petite Knit Patterns, but I think like, I don't know if it fits me well, so you know that's what that's what matters. I like the fit. Uh, I feel comfortable in it. 
I used a needle that she rec needle sizes that she recommended for the same reason because I usually get gauge um, with her, and then um, I did a couple of modifications. So one I mentioned before in the previous uh, episode that I was talking about this, the pattern has you do like an Italian cast on with like like all the faff of like knitting, double knitting, blah, blah, blah. And then you knit down and then you keep going down. And I didn't really want to do that Italian cast on. Like I'd never done it before. It seems a bit of a faff. And at the time that I was casting this on, I just didn't have the brain space to learn a new technique. So what I did is that I went to a technique that I knew. I did a provisional crochet cast on down here, knit the collar up, did like a sewn bind off and then picked up the stitches and then resumed and went back down. That worked really well for me. Although I need to go back into the comments because last time I was mentioning that someone else mentioned another cast on that looked similar and that could have worked great and I need to look more into it. Uh, I don't remember the name of it off of the top of my head, but I definitely need to look into it more. Um, so thank you for to whoever who's uh, suggested that to me. Uh, same thing for like the bind off at the cuffs and the hem. Uh, Petite Knit recommends that, you know, like tubular or Italian bind off with like the prep rows and all of this. I just did a sewn bind off. It's one by one ribbing, so you don't even have to adjust from a two by two, two by two ribbing. So that was easy enough for me and I like that bind off anyway. And then, um, yeah, and then I changed the colors, the color order a little bit. Uh, I think I mentioned it before. Ooh, the sun is coming in, we'll see what happens. Um, at the bottom, like the way it was working, uh, if I'd followed the chart and how she'd arranged the color, I think I would have had like a big sort of white dot here. And it basically would have created like a, a beige line here. And that last part of the color work felt a bit like disconnected from the rest. So I just rearranged colors a bit. So it felt more cohesive and yeah, I think I mentioned that before as well as that the chart on in the pattern, like you have a colored chart, but you also have like a black and white chart with like little symbols for each color, which is really nice because then you can go in and color in your own colors that you're using and make changes and see how it looks in like on paper before you knit it. So yeah, that was really great. Uh, and yeah, I think that's the only change that I made. Another thing is that I I was left with a full 100 grams of the main color at the end. And I didn't, I mean, I think it's a little bit cropped compared to um, what the pattern recommends. I'm not even sure because it's definitely not cropped. Like it hits me like well below the hip. Like it's definitely not cropped. The sleeves are nice and long. And so, yeah, and I had like two full balls of the main colors left so and I think I've heard other people say something like that as well that like they have a lot of main color left so maybe something to keep in mind like for example if you have stash yarn already and maybe you're 50 grams short of the main color like you'd probably be okay so yeah something to keep in mind I don't mind like I think that the yarn will be used um, anyway I think um, it's like a nice neutral beige yarn, so I'll find a use for it. And also, like, I have small leftovers, like, more or less small, actually, because for the contrast colors, like, some of the leftovers that I have are, like, 25 grams or, like, half a ball, so you really don't use that much in the yoke. And Petite Knit has designed a Celeste mitten pattern uh, that I think is designed to use a leftover yarn that you have from this sweater because the quantities are just right for me, so... Um, yeah, I will definitely knit that um, um, in the future just to use up my leftovers and have like a nice warm pair of mittens because why not? And all mittens are, su mittens are super quick anyway, so that'll be nice. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this one. Like, yeah, I really, really like it. Like really, I love it. I just love it. It is so warm and it's still quite cold in Scotland right now. It is spring and the days are... Uh, nicer and sunnier a little bit and um, like longer but it's still quite cold that it was zero degree last night so um, yeah definitely will get a bit of wear out of that still all right I'm going to move on to my second finished object which is a pair of socks that I was showing last time as well 
And I think last time I said, I'm committing to finishing this pair of socks by the next episode. And I did. And here they are. I hope it's focusing. I can't really see. All right. This is a pair of two by two ribbed socks. I didn't use a pattern. It's just a two by two ribbed socks with an extra long um, leg. I didn't do a cuff, I just went straight into the ribbing with an extra long leg that I can fold. So I can wear them folded, which I think is nice and warm and cute. And then the yarn that I used is um, Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company, the Hearth Sock in the shade um, Potted Shed. Potting Shed? Potting Shed, I think. Yeah. And I really like it. It's really lovely. It's kind of like this gray brown kind of color, but it's got like bits of red and bits of um, yellow. And yeah, I did my usual heel, heel flap and gusset with a little uh, garter stitch band on the on the side and then my usual round toe. And they're really nice and squishy, like they're really warm and I love them. I really love them. I wear them mostly in the house, which I do with all my socks. It's very rare that I wear them in boots and outside. Um, and yeah, I'm so pleased with it. It took so long for me to do this because to make these because I actually I originally cast these on. Um, I originally cast these on when was that? Uh, just in September, just before going to Shetland to have a. Um, sort of like on the go knitting project and then I decided well this is going to be my just my on the go out and about knitting project the thing is that like I don't I don't go places where I, like if I'm out of the house because I work from home and all that like if I'm out and about it's usually not it's rarely just like where I can sit and knit at the same time um I don't knit and walk places because I cycle places mostly and I'm, I'm not knitting on when I cycle you know like <laughs> don't do that um and then yeah if I'm out I'm doing something so I'm not like I don't always have it so it was just it took forever right so that's the point is that it took forever but I'm really glad they're done now and um yeah I'm looking forward to knitting them so I knit them on uh 2.5 millimeter needles a small small circular and that is what I usually use for my socks. However, non-superwash sock yarn um, tends to be a bit thicker than superwash sock yarn in that you get like 350, 360 meters per 100 gram, whereas in superwash sock yarn, you get like the actual 400, you sometimes even a bit more. And so, um, and so, I think I need to go down a needle size for that. Um, it's, it's fine, like it fits well and everything, but I think it would be nicer and denser if I went to 2.25 because my stitches are a bit bigger because the yarn is a bit thicker. So um, yeah, so it doesn't matter for these, like I don't mind at all. I don't feel that they're too big. I think also the ribbing really like, I think ribbing is amazing for socks um, to make them fit really well. Um, I think it's great if you want to gift socks because if you even if you don't know how wide the person's feet are, like ribbing is going to fit great. But yeah, in the future, and I'm going to show you one of my whips is also a pair of socks, also using uh, like natural sock yarn, like no nylon, non superwash sock yarn, and I've gone down to 2.25. And it seems quite nice now. I will see how it look on my uh, feet once I wear them because um, I also don't like it when the stitches are like it fits nice and snugly, but the stitches are like pulled, um, like pulling over your foot, and I don't like that either. So I'm, um, I'm curious to see um, how the next socks are gonna be on a smaller needle. Uh, I've just done the legs right now, so I don't know yet. I can't really try them on yet, but um, yeah, but I'm very happy with these. Like it's definitely, it's just like oh maybe it would be better to go down a needle size, but these are great. Uh, no no regrets and yeah i love them um this yarn is lovely it's very warm really enjoying it all right sip of tea i've been using my swatch from the, my color work swatch from um the hat i made my husband in the autumn or something as a coaster it works great i've been using it like ever since i was done with the project and it's great i love it 
So just a tip if you don't know what to do with your swatches, they make really good coasters. Oh no, I was going to say, let's move on into um, works in progress, but I have one last finished object, which is my sewing um, project. And it is, I'm going to show it to you. It's white, so it's going to mess up the light, but you know, we're going to live with that. And it is, oh, and then you get the sun and everything. It is this um, white t-shirt. I've actually made two. I'm wearing the other one, but they're exactly the same. And um, yeah, it's just a very basic white t-shirt. So um, a little while ago, I maybe like a year ago, even I would say, I started making um, my own t-shirts. And um, I'd gotten some white like cotton jersey and it works great, but it was a bit too thick. And so then I found some, I thought, well, I'm going to try a viscose jersey because viscose is um, very drapey and I thought it would be nicer. And so I bought a bit of a black viscose jersey and that worked so well. Those t-shirts, I, I made, I think, three or four, I think three, and I wear them like every day and then I wash them and I wear them again. like. They're the only one that I wear every day in the house. I've been wearing them for months now and I was concerned that it would, like they would lose their shape or, or they would get worn or anything like that, especially because like viscose, it's quite, it's a little bit of a fragile fabric. Um, and because yeah, they were so drapey and all that, I'm like, you know what, it's, it's okay. Like I'm, I made them to wear under sweaters, so I don't care if they don't look perfect all the time. But honestly, they've worn so well. They're really good as new, even though they get two, like, two washes. Like, yeah, I have three t-shirts. They go like to two wears and two washes per week for a month now. And yeah, they're perfect still. So very happy with the viscose jersey. But then around the same time, I saw that my fabric store had bamboo jersey. And I was like, oh, that's, that could be nice. It's also quite drapey. Let's, let's give it a try. And so I bought some fabric to make white t-shirts. And then the fabric's been sitting in my stash all this time because I kind of lost my sewing mojo. And then I was putting pressure on myself to like, I needed better white t-shirts than I had. But then I was like, oh, but I don't feel like sewing them, but you shouldn't buy them because you can't make them, but I don't feel like making them. And it was just like going back and forth in my head until the, like, to the point that I was like, you know what, like, just, just stop. I went to the shop and bought some white t-shirts, which I love. Um, and so I had the white t-shirts because I was putting so much pressure on myself. Like you shouldn't buy something because you make it, you can make it. And the thing is like, I didn't want to make it. I wasn't making it and I was unhappy because I was missing something in my wardrobe and that was silly. So I went and got t-shirts. But then, and then the other day my uh, sewing mojo came back and I was like, okay, let's make those t-shirts now. And so now I have more white t-shirts. So that's great. Bamboo fabric is really, really nice. Uh, it's also very drapey. Um, it's very cool. Like just touching it, the fabric feels quite cool. Um, so I think it's, it's, it'll be really nice in the warmer month, um, as well as just like, just here right now, like I was a bit concerned that wearing my Celeste sweater indoors, I was just going to be boiling and either, um, it's not as, it's not actually super, super warm and I'm fine. Or it's because I have this underneath that is a bit cooling. So it, it balances the warmth of the wool really well. I don't know, but yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's just your basic t-shirt. Um, I'm using a book for t-shirts called uh, Coudre le Stretch. It's a, it's a French book about the sewing jersey fabric, like stretchy fabric. Uh, Tilly and the Button in English has a similar book. Um, it's, yeah, it doesn't take very long. It's only a few pieces to cut. Like you have the front is one piece of fabric. The back is another piece of fabric. Each sleeve is a piece of fabric and then you have the, the neck bit here, which is like a long rectangle of fabric. You sew pretty much everything on the overlocker, so that is easy. And then you just use the, um, like on the regular sewing mach machine using the uh, twin needles uh, to do like the, um, the, the details. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna pick it up. Maybe at the front if I'm... Maybe not, but um, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just your basic t-shirt, but I'm quite pleased that I managed to do it. Um, my knitting mojo, my sewing mojo is definitely not uh, where my knitting mojo is. Um, 
I enjoy knitting, I, I enjoy sewing, I just don't enjoy all the faff of like having to take all my sewing machines out and set up the ironing board and all that stuff because it's not something that I can just leave out all the time. And so it's always an extra step. But um, I think what I would like to try is work through my stash of fabric. Um, and so I think I'm going to set um, not really like a goal, but like sort of an intention where over the next few months, I'm going to sew one item a month. I think that is totally doable. Like sewing goes much faster than knitting. Um, and so, yeah, I think the next thing I would like to do is I have some um, like linen viscose blend, a white fabric, and I would like to make a nice oversized button shirt. And I have a pattern that I really like that I've used before. So it's already like ready and cut and everything. The pattern pieces, the paper pattern pieces. But the pattern is short sleeve and I want to make it long sleeve. So I just need to look at some YouTube tutorial to figure out how to do this. But I think that would be great because I love the fit of that shirt. So, you know, it's funny because in, in knitting, I, it's very, very, I don't know that I've reused, that I've re-knit a pattern more than once, more, more than once, maybe just like a hat or something. But for sewing, if I find a pattern that works, and that fits me, I am happy to reuse it in 5 million different colors. I am so happy to do that. So <laughs> yeah, um, so I'll keep you posted. Hopefully next time I will also have a, a sewing item to show you. All right, now moving on for real to um, works in progress. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I feel like I'm talking a bit fast, but um, yeah, moving on to um, the works in progress because I ended my knitting uh, finished object with a sock. I'm going to start my works in progress with a sock. And this is the sock that I am knitting now. Uh, did I am knitting the... Oh shoot, I should have written down. Oh, I have written it down. The Fiorellini socks by uh, Mariev of the In Her Skein podcast. And it is her very first pattern that she is currently working on. And so it is a test knit that I am doing right now. The pattern will be released um, like mid-March, I believe. Um, and yeah, I will have put a picture of what the socks are supposed to look like. Um, but then I'm going to show you, hold on, tangles, tangles, tangles. Okay, I'm going to show you my version which looks like this. And the neighbors decided to do work. All right, hopefully it was not gonna last very long. So they look like these. So I've already, I've only done the legs. But I'm very, very pleased with them. Um, the yarn that I'm using is, here's the cake and here's the contrast color. All right, we are back. Hold on. There we go. We are back. It was some of the neighbor who thought it was a good idea to drill things in the common stairwell in the middle of the workday, but never mind. Um, I think he stopped now. Uh, in the process of like waiting for him to be done, I managed to choke on my tea, so my face might be a bit red. <laughs> and then uh, I moved, um, I moved a bit because the sun was uh, getting in my face. Anyway, I'm gonna start again. So with the my first work in progress, which is the Fiorellini sock by Mariev of the In Her Skein podcast. And these I've shown you what. Um, mine look like i'm just going to show you again because i don't know how i'm going to edit this and then the yarn that i was using i was telling you it's the same base just two different colors and it is by wild and bear fibers so these are what the tags look like now, if you've been here a little while, you may recognize this light purple one because I used it to knit my, uh, what I call my Miss Marple socks. And I call them that to the point that I don't remember what the actual name of the pattern is. Um, I think it's called the St. Mary Mead socks. Um, and I love them. I wear them all the time. Um, 
they're amazing. And I had another skein which the um, the dyer very kindly sent me. Um, so um, and I wasn't really sure. I did. I didn't have a set pattern for it yet. So I was really pleased to uh, use it for that. Uh, for this pattern, I I originally selected a sock set that I'd gotten from a Woolly Mammoth Fibrico, where the main color was like a dark red, and the mini was a bit of a golden color. But it turned out that the contrast was so low in between those two colors that uh, you couldn't see the color work. Like if you put, you know, when you put your phone or, or camera or something in black and white to see the contrast between two yarns, like they were the exact same shade of gray. So um, yeah, I, I, I just I just switched uh, um, the yarns that I chose. And yeah, it's a lovely, lovely pattern. Let me just go back to the yarn for a second. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a bit frazzled because yeah, I had to go up and ask the guy like how long he was going to be and he was just not very nice. So um, yeah, let's breathe. <laughs> Uh, the sock yarn is a no nylon non superwash sock yarn and it is a really really nice base so it's called the down tour sock and it is made of 89.5 percent blend of Exmoor, Horn, Dartmoor and Texel and then 10.5 percent Tensel um, to I guess to replace the nylon uh, sourced in uh, Cornwall, Devon and Hampshire, uh, Hampshire I guess I'm not sure uh, spun in Cornwall and I think it is also dyed in Cornwall and like I was telling you before this one is 350 meters per 100 grams um, so always a bit like thinner than uh, or thicker I mean than uh, like your normal your normal superwash sock yarn and I had about 20 grams of that light purple uh, left and I still have all of this I think I haven't weighed it just yet but I think maybe I used like five grams or something for for the color work and yeah, it's really beautiful. I really, really enjoyed knitting it. Um, the I haven't, I've done socks, obviously. I've done color work, obviously. I haven't done color work socks yet. So this is my first one. And I was a bit, uh, when I was knitting it, I was a bit concerned about if it was going to fit over my heel, you know. Uh, so I tried it after the first sock and it fit just fine. So uh, very pleased with that. The way I did it is that I'm, I'm knitting, again, like I was mentioning before, I'm knitting on 2.25. I think it makes a nicer, denser fabric, but I went to 2.5 for the color work because I know that in the sweaters that I've knitted so far and the hat and everything, like I need to go up a needle size when I do color work to get the same gauge. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing those. Like I said, I've done the two legs. I need to do the heels now and uh, the legs and the, not the legs, the feet. And um, yeah, it would be another really nice pair of socks. Uh, I need to finish it. I'm, I want to finish it like this week or this weekend because um, I think the deadline on the test knit is the 13th of March. And yeah, I guess the pattern will be released shortly after that. If you look up the hashtag on Instagram, uh, a bunch of testers have already finished theirs and they look really lovely in very different color combination, uh, which is really nice. It's also um, quite nice in this pattern in terms of sizes because uh, Marie-Ève provides four sizes. Um, I'm doing size two, uh, which I think is like a 64 stitch um, around. And so there's one size smaller than that and then two sizes bigger, which I think is quite... Uh, quite nice to have that in a pattern because many sock patterns just have the one size. Um, so yeah. All right, moving on to the second work in progress. I only have two and it is, hold on, how can I, because it's quite large. It is my um, Levy sweater or Levy pullover, I think it's called by Sari Nordlin. I mentioned it the last time because I showed you the yarn that I'd got for it, but I've cast it on. And I'm really pleased with how it's looking so far. So here it is. I'm halfway through the yoke, I would say. I'm going to show you and try not to bump into the microphone. So there's not much to show just now. Um, you start at the top with just like a normal like long tail cast on or German twisted cast on or, you know, something stretchy. 
you do a bunch of ribbing and then you go into the color work it's a round, round yoke and yeah i'm quite happy with it right now the yarn that i'm using is so two of them are Filcolana peruvian highland wool this is marzipan marzipan melange and uh cinnamon cinnamon melange i think and then for the green i'm using pure gint um which is what I was telling you before, like they work pretty much interchangeably because I'm using both in the same pattern, in the same color work, and I honestly can't tell the difference um, in terms of like gauge and all that. Um, so yeah, I am, right now I am not like a million percent ecstatic about my color choices, um, but we'll see. I feel like it's a bit dark and I know the contrast here is not the best. It is contrasty enough, but uh, I think it will. I will feel a lot better about it once I have more beige. Uh, I think it's just because it's a bit like two, just the two colors right now. But right now I'm in a section where I think I've done most of the green, to be honest, almost. And then it's going to be a lot of the brown and the beige, and then the whole body is going to be in the beige. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's very soft. It's going to have a sort of like a short turtleneck, which I'm quite happy about. Um, I think it'll be really nice. I don't know how much I'm going to get out of it this year still, but I think it's going to be really nice uh, next year in the autumn and in the winter. And I kind of like um, like funnel neck like this or tur turtleneck uh, to wear when you go like for a quick walk in the morning, because then you don't have to worry to worry about a scarf because, you know, the sweater is doing the job. I think also it suits me quite nice. Like I like I don't know, I feel good in them. So uh, yeah, is there anything more that I wanted to say about this pattern? I'm making the size three uh, because the yarns are so similar to um, <clears throat> uh, this, this last sweater. Uh, I know the gauge that I get with different needle sizes, so I didn't feel the need to swatch. It's also going to be a bit like nice and oversized anyway, so I'm not too concerned about the fit. Um, I did when I did go down a needle size for the collar um, than what is recommended in the pattern because I think in the pattern she recommends you use 3.5 for all the ribbing so the collar the cuffs and the hem at the bottom in the Celeste sweater uh, the cuffs and the hem are on 3.5 but the neck is on three millimeter and I think that gives it a bit because it's a bit tighter it gives it a bit more structure like it it prevents it being floppy and I like that and so um, I did that as well for the levy sweater I put like I did the the collar on a bit smaller needles and I think it has a nice like has a nice bounce a nice like structure and I think it will hold itself up more um, once it's folded and all of that so yeah I mean it's just like it's a little thing right it's not like the most important thing but yeah i just thought i'd mention it and then yeah so far i let me get my notes uh, rather than just always looking to the side so far i haven't done any uh, modification other than just changing that needle size uh, i am planning to uh, i will have put a picture on the side before but there's like big chunks of color work where there's a lot of stitches that you would have to catch your floats definitely um and so i think for that because i'm using like a darker color behind the beige i think i'm gonna do some ladder back track hard for those like specific section just so it doesn't show through uh and that will that will be good because i haven't done it yet but i think it will be a nice way to try it out i just need to like i know how it works i just need to rewatch a, a tutorial just to know exactly where how you start it because i don't remember that exactly and then i will um remove the color work at the elbow i'll pop the picture again but there's like like dots around the elbow in, in the pattern and I'm not a big fan so I'll just remove them. I think a lot of people who've knitted the pattern have actually removed them. Um, yeah, it's just personally I'm not too keen on those so I'll I'll just make the sleeves um, like plain color and then the color work uh, at, the, at the wrist. I'm also wondering if I might, instead of doing those big like peaks at the hem of the body, if I might not do if I might not repeat the color work that's on the on the sleeve, um, I've heard a few people like suggest that, and 
I can see how it would look quite nice. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just see how I feel when I get there. Um, yeah, I'll just see how I feel when I get there. So yeah, I think that's all for uh, my works in progress. I'm starting to feel a bit better about that. Like my mood is lifting, just talking about knitting uh, after that interaction with, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I think these are all my works in progress right now. Um, I will have the socks finished by the next episode for sure. And I hope to have the sweater finished by the next episode for sure. And yeah, I hope I will have cast on like a bunch of new things that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm going to move on into acquisitions. I have just a few acquisitions um, that I think I sort of mentioned before. Um, it was my birthday last month. Uh, after I recorded the last podcast and so I said that I was going to go I had a list of things that I wanted to treat myself to and I, th I said that I was going to do that and I did and so I'm going to show those um, to you so I had said that I was going to um, buy I was going to buy yarn to make the baker scarf by Fiber Tales and this is what I did and I bought the exact same colors as she did because I really like the dark green that she had and so um here it is, sorry about the plastic noise. So I have two plates of uh, Plotulopi, which is what she's using in the shade, I think it's called Frosted Grass. It's like a really nice, cool, dark green um, with like specks of orange and yellow in it. It's it's really lovely. And then she's holding it together with Isair Silk Mohair in the shade uh, 68 which is like a much warmer green, like kind of like a warm olive green. And yeah, it's very soft. I'm really looking forward to casting this on. I've never used any of these two yarns, so I've never used this mohair. Uh, I'm slightly, sl um, not slightly, slowly sort of like considering mohair again. It used to be so, so scratchy for me, uh, but some of them are quite soft and I, yeah, I thought I would give it another go. And I feel like for a scarf like that, which is not necessarily like really tight against your body, if it's a little bit itchy, it's definitely manageable. So I thought I would give it a go on a scarf and see how it feels. The Isaiah Silk Mohair is quite soft, I find. And a lot of people have said that is one of the softest. So I'm looking forward to uh, trying that out. And then the Plotulopi I've never used either. I have used Unspun before, but just not this one. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to... Uh, casting this on. I think this is going to be my next cast on after I finished one of the two things that I'm currently working on. I have decided, or I haven't decided, but I have figured out that summer knits are really not really my thing. Like camisoles and tees and, and things like that, they're just not really my thing. I don't really see myself wearing them. I don't really see myself enjoying knitting them. And yeah, actually mostly I don't see myself wearing them and so why would I knit them if I'm not going to wear them? I think in summer my sewing mojo comes back and I would rather make, make my, like sew myself tops, like shirts and things. But what I do wear in summer a lot is uh, shawls. Um, because, yeah, Scotland, like, it's not, like, heat wave is relative here. It never gets really that hot. Um... But you can sometimes just be out in a t-shirt and then wearing a sweater is too hot and i find that to me like a shawl is the perfect accessory to have uh, you don't have to put it on but then if it's a bit cold or a bit chilly you can uh, put it on your shoulder and feel comfortable like i love so i think shawls are my summer knits to be honest so yeah i'm eager to cast this one on to have uh, for the summer also i love the color so much and then uh the next thing that i, th I said i was going to buy is this book by Sarah Nordland. It's called um, Softly, Timeless Knits, and it's so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. It's also interesting because I think it was shot, like everything was shot in Paris for, I don't know why she chose that, but yeah, all the pictures are in Paris, uh, taken in Paris, it seems, and I, I used to live in Paris, and so it's kind of fun to like see some of those um, places but yeah there's some beautiful let me let me see which one I could show you that I really like um, page 125 
me see if I can find a nice, yeah, look at that. Isn't that amazing? This is so pretty, if it will focus. No, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of cables, a lot of texture, and I just, yeah, I really love it. So I'm looking forward to knitting some of the things that are in there. I just need to have a look through my stash at what I have that could be used and if, and what I would like to knit as well. And if I don't have the stash, then I can just buy it. Um, and yeah, and so I bought this book from Ginger Twist, which is my local yarn shop. And obviously I saw some yarn that I could not resist buying as well, which was not the plan. But they are now, uh, since they've moved into the new space, they are stocking so much more yarn, and uh, which is amazing. I love it. And I noticed that they had the Garthener, Garthenor um, sock yarn. Um, so I got two skeins because they're 50 grams each and I need more than 50 grams for a pair of socks. I need like 60 or something. So I bought two. Uh, I think one of you mentioned that to me once when I was talking about Known Island on Superwash, like natural sock yarns, that Garthenor was doing one, which I didn't know. So I'm so glad to have found one. Uh, it is this beautiful, like warm cinnamon brown kind of shade. It's called Sundew, the shade uh, color. It's a fingering weight. Uh, this one actually has 400 meters per 100 grams because it says 200 per 50 grams. It is made of 50% Romney and 50% Hebridean, grown in South Wales, the Scottish Islands and Southwest England. Scoured, spun and dyed in Yorkshire and hand finished in West Wales. So a true British yarn. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to using it. It's really beautiful. Uh, I think I am going to make the um, uh, the grow socks with that by Fiber Tails. Um, I've been wanting to make those socks for such a long time, and I had originally bought this yarn for it, which is like a also like a natural sock yarn from uh, Whistle Whistle Bear, and it is eighty percent Whistle Bear mohair and twenty percent Wensleydale, and I love the color and things like and all of that. Like it's really really nice. But one of you, uh, thank you very much, mentioned that mohair and Wensleydale like make for a very drapey yarn, which it is like, this is what this one looks like when I hold it, like it's drooping here. This is one, this one, this is what this one looks like, no droopage whatsoever. And so someone said that because of this, like it's the, the knit is going to be very drapey and that might mean like socks that, uh, sort of like slouch a bit, um, which I hadn't really thought about. And doing the grow socks where you have that texture at the top that's going to add weight, I think is definitely going to make them droop down or like slide down my leg, which is not something that I want, definitely. So I'm going to make the grow socks out of these, I think. And for that, that yarn, that green yarn, in order to compensate the drapiness and prevent my socks from sliding down my legs, I think I'm going to pick a pattern that has some variation of ribbing in it, uh, because then like the, um, the rib is going to like really, the texture is going to make it really like tighten around my leg. And I think that's going to be a great way to balance out the, the drape of this yarn. So yeah, let me know if you've, let me know if you've used that. So it's the Whistlebear Cuthbert socks. Um, yeah, let me know if you've used that yarn in socks and how uh, how it's working out for you. I would love to. I would love to hear. And yeah, I think that's all I have to share. Uh, I'm just gonna do a minute of like shop news, uh, but you know, if you're not interested, that's fine. Um, like I was saying before, there's a newsletter now, so if you want to sign up, go ahead. This is where I will share. Uh, the dates and times of shop updates as well as any new items that come into the shop. I have had a really nice um, designing week last week or the week before where I have designed a bunch of new stitch marker sets and I'm going to have like one is going to be released every month uh, this year. This is my, my, my goal. And I have designed like all the new sets up until July right now, which I'm really happy about because I feel more... Uh, like I feel like I'm ahead and a bit more in control um, and a bit less overwhelmed with the work. So uh, I think that's really 
Like I'm really happy with it. And yeah, I'm going to be announcing, like showing those new sets and announcing when they're released and available in the shop in the newsletters. So, and when I restock bags and things like that, um, that will be in the newsletters as well. I will put it on Instagram, but again, like Instagram is not the most reliable. And um, yeah, so I've I just did a shop update like a few days ago with bags and things. Uh, I think they've mostly, I think there's maybe one bag still available at the time of recording. Uh, but yeah, they've mostly sold out and yeah, I don't know exactly when I'm going to do the next shop update with bags, like when I'm going to restock bags next. So I will announce that in the newsletter when I know. Uh, it's probably going to be in April, but not early April, more like mid to late April, I think. Uh, but we'll see. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll announce a date uh, via the newsletter. And yeah, I've got loads of stitch markers. And so, yeah, I have a new set that I wanted to show you um for this month for march the new stitch marker set is one with cats which i think i mentioned it here before that i was like thinking of um designing something with cats and yeah i'm gonna try and show you like this if i can but i will put a picture on the side uh, but yeah let me see if i can if it's gonna focus in any way i guess a little bit it's a black cat and then like little balls of I'm just going to put a picture because it's easier. <laughs> Those are so small. And then like four little balls of yarn in like a curly pink, a pale pink, a yellow and a green. And um, yeah, the this set is called Whiskers and Wool. I wasn't really sure what to name it. So I put it up on Instagram and asked people for a suggestion. And like the person who suggested the name that I ended up choosing uh, would get a, a free set. Uh, so that's all been taken care of now. Uh, thank you if you're watching. I don't know if that person is watching the, the podcast, but... Yeah, that person who suggested Whiskers and Wool, I think it's really a really sweet name. So um, yeah, so that that's the stitch markers are always available in the shop. Uh, it's very rare that they run out. So um, yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, I think that's all I had to say about the shop. And uh, yeah, I think that's the end of the podcast. And I'm trying to think if I forgot something or not, but... I don't think so. So I'm going to stop there because I'm just rambling now. Uh, thank you so very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, please leave it a like or a comment or make sure that you are subscribed if you're not yet. And um, yeah, I will see you very soon. I'm going to Yarn Festival at the end of March, which I will try to vlog, but no promises because I'm not really sure how to go about it just yet. So we'll see how it goes. And then... I will be back with another podcast episode either at the end of March or very, very early April um, to share more knitting stuff with you. Anyway, have a really lovely rest of your day. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.